Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for a tutorial on what I thought was the most basic Ableton knowledge, but apparently based on the questions that I get every day from my students and the mistakes that I keep seeing every time is not that basic at all. Let's get it started. Hey guys, my name is Francesco. I make house music as Distill Noise and videos on YouTube and Patreon speaking about music production. If you're here for the first time, you have a lot of videos you can watch on my YouTube channel, but if you need more in-depth video tutorial, but also you want to connect with a community of like-minded people, join the Minimal Improvements community on Patreon. You find the link in the description. Today I want to talk about how to properly save Ableton projects, not just for your yourself and to keep your computer clean, but also to be able to share them with potential collaborators or potential tutors that are helping you to work on your project and make sure that those projects works for them as well. There are no missing files, no plugins that are not working. So I know that you're probably thinking you're doing it right, but are you really sure? <laughs> keep watching the video, let me know in the comments if you did it right or if you didn't, what you were doing wrong or just send this video to a friend that just can't get it right yet. Mistaking this first part of the process can cause you headaches, not just because you end up with a very messy computer, but also because you end up with enormous files once you want to share them, because you don't just have the files from that project in the folder, but you have files from all of the projects that you'll be working on. And I show you why this happens sometimes if you don't pay attention. So I have here a blank project. Okay, I just opened a new live set. Now I want to drag a couple of sample inside some of the tracks just for the sake of the examples, example. And uh, at this point I want to save my project. So if I go on file and save live set as, as you can see, it's inside this folder called Who is Beats Hey Project. This is one of my students. So Ableton by default sends me to save this new Ableton live set ALS file inside the project folder of another project, the last I was working on. So if I press save, let's call this example. If I press save, it just saved this project inside this folder and it saved just the ALS, so it didn't create a new folder. This happens when you save your ALS inside another Ableton project folder, okay? This is not the right way to save it. So I will do it again and I will show you the best way because when you save it like that and if you collect all and save the samples, it will collect the samples inside another project folder, okay? Where you have other samples from another project and that's when your project, get, your project folder gets bigger and bigger and if you want to share it, you also share samples from other projects. This is not the right way. The best way is, and the only right way in my opinion, is saving list set as having on your computer a parental folder which I called Ableton projects. In this folder I have all of my projects and I save this new project here in this parental folder. I call this example, I save it. Now if I go inside my Ableton project, I say Ableton project icon and I go inside and I have my ALS. So from this point on, everything that I do in my project will be saved inside this, inside this folder. This is the first part, but it's not not the only one. Let's go to the next step. When you use samples from your library in a project, those samples are not saved automatically inside the Ableton project folder because Ableton can reference to their original position in your library. But if you share this file with someone else, he or she probably doesn't have those files in their computer, okay? And so if you don't put those files, those samples inside the Ableton project folder, Ableton will tell them those samples are missing. If we go have a look inside the example project folder, what you can see now is this Ableton project info folder which doesn't have anything inside and the Ableton live set. But we know that I used some external samples in my project and they are not here. So if I send this folder to my friend, he won't or she won't be able to see and use those samples. So we go here on file and collect all and save. Now you have this window which asks you if you want to save just the files from elsewhere or file from other project, file from user library, 
factory packs, those last two, they should have it if they have the same version of Ableton. But I always include all of them. So yes on every box and I press OK. At this point, if I go back here, you can see we have two new folders. The first one is backup. This is just for saving previous versions of, of your project in case of a crash. This is something that Ableton does automatically. But then you have this folder, which is called samples. You have imported samples. And now you can see I have my reverb snare and my uh, TR606 hot. So now if I send this project to someone else, he will automatically have these samples working in the project. That's why collect all and save is key when you send your project to someone else. Never forget to do it. Before moving to the next tip, I want to take a little break to answer to another question not related to how to save projects on Ableton, but that I get a lot, which is how do you make your spinning vinyls videos that you have on your Instagram for the previews of your tracks? So the answer is mybeat.io, which is also the sponsor of this video, but it's actually, he's actually a friend of mine. He's from Netherlands. We partied together at ADE in 2022. Jim is uh, made the website all on his own. So big ups to him. I've been using this uh, website for forever since it was burned. It's filled with features. Most of them are free. If you go here on features, you can see what are the free features. Spinning vinyls is free. Putting backgrounds is free. Putting GIFs on the background is free. Cropping your track is free. You don't have to load the one minute preview, but you can load the full track and then crop it inside the, the website. There is also this new feature, which is also free, that you can create canvas for Spotify, which helps the algorithm to get pushed if you put your tracks on Spotify. What you can do with the, with the pro plan, which is five euros per month, is, for example, creating artwork with AI. If you don't have ideas, or ideas or you don't have time to look for an artwork you can generate it with AI and this is integrated in the website so super cool and there are other pro features that you can see and and have a look in the website so check it out you can try the free plan or you can take it to the next level with the pro features for five euros per month but if you use the link in the description of the video you can get a one euro discount on the subscription Collecting gold and saving is a function that takes care of saving all of the external samples of an Ableton project inside the Ableton project folder. But what if the person I'm working with is using external plugins, plugins that I don't have in my library? This is another problem and it can get solved by using the freezing function. The freeze function was first invented to save CPU load because when you start having a lot of plugins in your project, you might have a hard time for your CPU, especially if, if your computer is not that powerful. So what the freeze function does is creating an audio export of that track and reading it in background. So that basically is just like having an audio file instead of running signal through the plugins in real time and process it. So it's way lighter on the CPU. But the other reason you can freeze your file is that because having the audio file, even if you have plugins that your recipient doesn't have, he is able to to run the project uh, and hear what those plugins are doing. Hear the audio files and the result of the, that chain chain of plugins. So for example, I have this project here. Let's suppose this Juno organ track is made with external plugins. It's not in this case. What you can do is go here and press freeze track. So this is freezing the track. This is creating an audio of that track and what you see now is this sort of frozen track that you can do much on it. You can't switch on and off the effects, you can't uh, delete the effects, all you can do is just hearing the audio output of this audio track. So this is the downside of freezing, you can't work on the track, you can't change the MIDI, you can change because it's like having an audio track. The only things that you can do is, for example, rearranging the arrangement so you can cut pieces, you can bring this and move it here, okay? So you can do this, but it's exactly like having the audio waveform and the lead parts and moving them around the arrangement. If you want to apply effects on this track, you can do it, you can't do it directly on the track, you can just change the volume and the send returns, but if you want to 
apply effects, you need to group this track, so you apply the effects to, a group, to the group. When I work with people that use third-party plugins, I ask them to freeze all of the tracks where they have these plugins, so that I'm sure that when I open the project, everything is working. If we go and see what's inside the folder, if we go inside the samples folder, you can see we have processed file and freeze. So here you will see all of the free frozen tracks that you have. So as I said, there is an export of that track. Freezing the tracks in your project will increase the dimension of this project folder. Okay, so now this folder here is heavier than before because I exported a channel, so it's probably 100 megabyte heavier than before. So if you have a lot of tracks that are frozen, your file will be big. The next step to freezing that some people ask me if they have to do that, and I always say no, is a flattening. If you flatten a track, basically you substitute this thing here that you see that it's reversible because I can go here and set unfreeze track and you go back to be able to touch the parameters. Uh, if you flatten it, you will substitute the audio file. So once you do that, you save the project, you send, you send to someone else, he can't go back anymore. So keeping the track frozen is very handy because if I work on this track and then I send it back to the guy that made the track, he can unfreeze the track and keep working on the track because maybe he changed his mind, he wants to change a little bit the bass. It's reversible. Flattening the track is not. So I always say just freeze the track and send it over. So before closing the video, I want to give you one last bonus tip, which is not about how to save the project, but how to organize it when you work with other people. Especially if you're, if you're working with tutors and you're paying them for their time, it's not ideal that when the tutor receives the project, he has to spend like 10 minutes or 15 minutes just to figure out what is in your project, where all the tracks are, where to find the baseline, where to find the hats or the kick, okay? So having an organized project may, will make his life easier, her life easier, but also will, will get you to save money. So if you have a look at my projects, I have a template. This template I also shared with my patrons and it's a very simple template that simple, simply is color coded. I have my kick red, my snare and claps yellow and so on. Everything is put in groups. I have the snare group, the hi-hats group, the percussion groups and all of these groups are inside my drum group, the general one. Then I have the bass line which is purple, synths are blue and so on. So if you try to have a color code which doesn't have the same as your tutor or as your friend but simply it tells immediately your friend what he's looking for with the name of the tracks and of the group this will save a lot of time and again some headaches cool so guys i hope this video helped you out a little bit this video also helps me because from now on when someone asks me things i will send him the video so he can see and learn how to do that properly if you know some friends that struggle with saving files please share the video and if you're not subscribed yet click the subscribe button and the like button to support this video. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.